Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Jeff. I'll be your facilitator this evening. Uh, we've got five or six institutions joining us tonight. Um, just as a reminder to everyone, your, uh, your videos are off, your microphones are turned off. If you have a question to ask one of the universities, um, feel free to hit the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Um, you can ask questions of any institution at any time. You don't have to wait for them to, uh, for their presentation or uh, wait for them to finish their presentation. So without further ado, I will uh, turn it over to Northeastern State University. Awesome. Thank you. Um, good evening, guys. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, my name is Zephram Foster. I'm from Northeastern State University. Um, and tonight I'm going to tell you a little bit about NSU. I'm going to share my screen. Let me see. Right here. Okay. Hope everybody can see that. If not, somebody just type in the chat. This is our campus view book. So uh, this here kind of has all the information and an overview about NSU. That's what I'm going to give you first. Um, and then I'll go into scholarships and how to apply right after that. Okay. So NSU is the fourth largest four-year public institution in Oklahoma. So we are um, a little bit smaller than UCO, um, but we also have the fourth lowest tuition in Oklahoma. Um, so what that looks like is we're a good size. Um, we're that full four-year college experience, um, but uh, we have the fourth lowest tuition. So we're very affordable. Um, we have three campuses. Our main campus is Tahlequah, Oklahoma. Um, if you don't know where that is, we're in the northeast corner, about an hour outside of Tulsa. And that's our main campus. That's where um, most students spend their whole four years. Um, our Muskogee campus is mainly for our allied health programs. So things like speech pathology. If you want to be a speech path, you'd be in Muskogee. Um, and then our Broken Arrow campus is for upper level classes, junior and senior uh, night classes. If you want to take night classes to get ahead, stuff like that. Um, so we offer 58 undergraduate degrees and 26 graduate degrees. Um, we have everything from computer science to art um, uh, to political science. Um, it's really easy to find your niche here at NSU, I think. When I came, I didn't know what I wanted to major in. Um, but because of the size of the school, um, it's that perfect middle ground where you get the full experience. There's tons of stuff to be involved in. Um, but it's small enough that you're able to talk to professors, you're able to explore things, and you're able to really figure out what's a good fit for you. And so, um, like it says, we have an 18 to one student to faculty ratio. Um, so what that ends up looking like is that 85% of your classes are gonna have 30 students or less. And I think that's one of the biggest strengths of NSU. That was the one thing that I loved coming here was that you're in classes that aren't huge. Um, if you want to meet with your professor, you don't have to schedule a month in advance. Um, the, their door is always open. You get to know your professors, especially the ones that are in your field once you get into your major. Um, it's really easy to take the same professor multiple times if you like them. That's what I did. Um, and having those smaller class sizes made it so that it really felt um, accessible, felt like there was always a way for me to get help if I needed it. So, um, we have a study abroad program. Um, like it says here, we have 79% of our undergraduates uh, receive financial aid. So um, I'll go into scholarships here in a second to talk more about that. Okay, so early freshman scholarships. Um, the freshman scholarships for the, or for the general freshman scholarships, most of those, um, it's one application. So as soon as you're admitted, you can fill out a scholarship application and it's just one application, no essay, um, and that puts you in the running for all of our general freshman scholarships. Uh, the deadline for that is March 1st, so I would encourage you, if you're looking at NSU at all, even a little bit, to fill out that application for scholarships as early as possible. Um, we also have an honors, we have three honors scholarships and one PLC scholarship, that's President's Leadership Class. Um, those are a separate application and those will be due, those are usually due on February 1st. So. Uh, right here, you can see um, our in-state tuition, fees, uh, books and supplies, and room and board totals. Um, and then right here, it lists all of our 
scholarship. So there's the three honor scholarships and the president's leadership class, and then the general scholarships, which like I said, is one application, no essay um, that you do online. Okay, so um, right here, these are the freshman requirements for admission. Um, I have a couple minutes left, so I'm gonna go over these real quick, but basically what you need to know is you only need one of these options, option one, two, or three. You don't need one and two or all three. Um, option one is having an ACT of 20 or an SAT of 1030. Option two is if you have a 2.7 GPA and you're in the top 50% of your class. And then option three is a 2.7 GPA in your core classes, that being math, science, things like that. Um, if you meet any of those three options, then you are admitted to NSU. Um, and at, like I said, if you do get admitted, then I would encourage you to fill out that scholarship application immediately. Um, I'm gonna show you where you can do that. So first to apply to NSU, um, you're gonna to wanna to go to apply.nsuok.edu. Um, you're gonna, that you'll be the fall 2021 undergraduate application for you guys. Um, and that application is open right now. So I would encourage you to do that as soon as possible. Um, and as soon as you're admitted, you can go to scholarships.nsuok.edu and fill out our scholarship application, which again, that's open as well. So I would encourage you guys um, to do both of those as soon as possible. Um, that's a little bit of an overview of NSU as a whole. Um, like I said, I think we're that perfect sweet spot of size um, and affordability. I loved my four years here. Um, I found it really easy to get plugged in. Um, I found it really easy to get help in classes when I needed it. Uh, we have a beautiful campus. Um, wonderful faculty who are always willing to help. Um, and I really do think it's a great place uh, to spend your four years of college. Um, so if you guys have any questions at all for me, and I encourage you to put those in the Q&A um, section on Zoom here. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Um, but yeah, that's a, bit, that's a bit about NSU. And if you have any questions, feel free to either uh, post them now in the Q&A or reach out to me at any time. Thanks so much, appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, next up is the University of Arkansas, Fort Smith. Okay. Um, my name is Renisha, and I'm going to just speak a little bit about the University of Arkansas, Fort Smith. Um, so basically, I'm going to just give a little bit of UAFS at a glance. Um, so we are located in Fort Smith, Arkansas, which is the second largest city in Arkansas. Um, we are on the Arkansas-Oklahoma border. So we are pretty close to um, a lot of the main areas. Tulsa is about two hours. Um, Oklahoma City is about three hours. So we are right there on that border. Um, we do have athletics. We are a D2 school in the Lone Star Conference. Our student to faculty ratio is 18 to one. So um, like previously mentioned, we do have, um, we are that sweet spot as well, kinda, um, as to where you can meet with your professors, talk to them, ask them questions. They know who you are um, because your class sizes aren't too terribly large. And we do have also offer a lot of student activities on our campus. We have more than 100 registered student organizations. Um, and as far as academic programs go, we have over, we have 51 bachelor's and associate's degrees, um, 36 certificates and two master's programs. Um, we do have a lot of associate's degrees because we did start out as a junior college um, many years ago. And so we wanted to keep that same kind of setup and offer those associate degrees to students that um, were searching for those. So we do have a lot of associate degrees um, as well as bachelor's programs. And we just started offering masters within like the last five or so years. Um, so now I'm gonna just talk about our admission criteria. Um, what do you need in order to be admitted? And so basically um, you must have one of the following. Um, so for the ACT score, you have to have this regardless of um, your admission status. So we need you to have a 13 in math, a 15 in reading, and a 15 in writing. And that is gonna go for either option, a way that you are admitted. And so the rest of it is up to you. So you have to have a cumulative high school GPA of a 3.0 or higher, or um, the top 50% of your graduating class. So if you meet the ACT minimums and one of the other two requirements, you will be accepted. 
And then we do also accept the um, comparable SAT scores as well. Or if the option didn't work for you, um, composite ACT score with 15 with um, a 13 in math, a 15 in reading and a 15 in writing and um, the cumulative high school GPA of a 2.25 or higher. So basically that's what you're gonna need to get into UAFS. Um, so what do you need to submit? How do you go about um, becoming a student with us? So we do need you to complete our application on our website and we will need a copy of your high school transcript. Your high school transcript can be sent to us from your school, your counselor, whoever at your school sends it to us. We will need that. Um, we will need to see your ACT or SAT scores so we can go ahead um, and put that in the system and get you ready for scholarships. And then we would also require a copy of your immunization records um, to show two proofs of MMR shots. And so I'm gonna talk about scholarships heavily um, because our scholarship deadline is rather quick. Um, our scholarship deadline is November the 15th and that's going to be for our priority deadline. So basically that is kind of like a first come first serve. The students that um, are applying before then, they have a higher chance of receiving those scholarships. And so we, that's what we say for our prestigious scholarships as well as our merit scholarships. So basically looking at the screen, these are our prestigious scholarships. So they're gonna be the higher achieving students that have over 26 or higher on the ACT. Um, the top one is the honors program. The honors program is not specific to major. So anybody that meets these requirements can apply for this. Um, you will have to go through an interview process as well as submit a resume um, and submit some letters of recommendation as well. Um, the other three, so we do have one for business, STEM and engineering. So those are major specific. And basically the thing to worry about on those is that um, they are specific to majors. So if for some reason you decide to change your major, um, you will lose that scholarship. So definitely want to be sure that if you're picking a um, major specific scholarship that you are planning on sticking with that throughout the whole four years. Um, I know students like to change their major sometimes, so I totally understand. Um, so that's for the prestigious scholarships and the merit scholarships is kind of something that we offer more for more students just because of the ACT requirements in the GPA. So the merit scholarships, all you have to do to apply for these scholarships is our application online. Applying to the school is your application to these um, scholarships. And our priority scholarship deadline is November the 15th. So that is coming up pretty quick. Um, so definitely make sure that if you are interested that you have everything in by those days, um, because that is like the priority deadline. So you can still apply after that day, but just know that the scholarships are gonna be more priority to those that apply before this deadline. Um, for Oklahoma students, it is something that I need to note that we do not accept Oklahoma Promise, um, but we do offer in-state tuition to our border states. So if you are someone that maybe you don't receive Oklahoma Promise and you're interested in getting out of Oklahoma for school, um, just know that we are on the border. And so we are pretty close if you are closer to the border of Arkansas, Oklahoma, and um, we do offer that in-state tuition. So that is something that um, we like to share with our students. Um, if you have any questions, I can be reached at email or my phone number. Um, so I would definitely be willing to help you guys out. I am the Oklahoma recruiter. So I will talk to anybody from Oklahoma or just anyone in general. Um, so just let me know if you have any questions. Um, you can also put them in the chat and I will answer them there. So thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, don't forget individuals that are participating. Uh, feel free to ask questions at any time through the Q&A session um, that is at the bottom of your screen where you see the Q&A button and uh, you can ask any institution at any time questions that you might have. So next up we have, um, excuse me, we have Northeastern Oklahoma A&M College. Hi everyone, I'm going to share my screen. This is Elsie Grover. Um, let me get you going here. I'm going to show a quick video and hopefully you guys can all um, see this. Hopefully.
All right, so um, I hope everybody was able to hear that um, and see that screen as well. I'm gonna go ahead and start my actual video so you can actually see me. Um, I work here at NEO, I've been here for 12 years now, and NEO has, it's a small junior college, as they mentioned, it really that has a university feel to it. Um, we have 12 different competitive sports. Um, we are the only junior college in the state of Oklahoma that has football. We are the only junior college in the state of Oklahoma that has a marching band as well. So it really has that university feel and vibe to it. So um, you really get that experience without the cost and really a lot smaller class size. We have an average of 20 to one ratio as far as your teachers. So they're really gonna get to know you uh, and you do become family. Um, some things that will be coming up, we definitely encourage students to apply. It is free and we do admit all students. So regardless of whether you, or not you have um, even taken the ACT, we will admit you, especially right now during the COVID situation, uh, an ACT is not required. Scholarships for us will open up on, excuse me, January 1st, and the deadline is March 1st. So definitely encourage you to come out and apply. If you wanna come out for a tour, we'd be happy to um, take you around so you get to meet a lot of our students, come and eat in our cafeteria and really get to experience what our regular students get to experience. Uh, we are nationally known for our agriculture programs. Many people, no matter where I go, often they'll, they'll always recognize the NEO in regards to um, our ag programs. We do have livestock judging, horse judging. Uh, we have a rodeo team as well. Um, so we have so many different sports that our students can come and participate in. Like I said, uh, about 40% of all of our students come and live on our campus. So we have that traditional experience and vibe. And um, if you do qualify for Oklahoma Promise or you are a twin, you get a free traditional dorm room scholarship. So we definitely encourage you to take advantage of that as well. We have over 40 different academic programs, uh, whether it's nursing, um, business and technology, and it just kind of really varies all over the board, but we encourage you to um, apply as quickly as you can. Like I said, it's free uh, if you wanna come out and visit us. We are located about an hour and 10 minutes north of Tulsa, about 30 minutes away from Joplin, Missouri. So. Um, again, we encourage you to come out and, and check us out on our campus. So if you have any questions, feel free. Uh, my name is Elsie Grover, and I would be happy to assist you with anything. I'll stick around in the chat as well if you have any questions. Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, yes, don't forget to ask your questions. And next up, we have Oklahoma Baptist. Hi guys, my name is Gina Shea and I'm an admissions counselor here at Oklahoma Baptist University. And I'm really excited to share with you guys a little bit about what OBU has to offer you. So here at OBU, um, we are a, a Christian liberal arts institution. So we believe in transforming lives by equipping students to pursue academic excellence integrate faith in all areas of knowledge and engage in a diverse world and live worthy of the high calling of God in Christ. Um, so we are located smack dab in the middle of Oklahoma um, and we are about 30 minutes um, outside of Oklahoma City. So if you are missing um, one way streets or a little bit of traffic, not too far, it's about a 30 minute drive. Uh, but here in Shawnee, you can find bike trails, you can find all of the college necessities. So fast food, restaurants, movie theaters, bowling alleys, um, all of that fun stuff that, that Shawnee has to offer, but if you're wanting some of those bigger city um, things or experiences, again, 30 minutes, not too far. We're about an hour and 30 minutes from Tulsa, uh, which is where I'm from. And then we're about three and a half hours from Dallas. So um, I, a couple weekends while I was here as a student, uh, we would travel down to Dallas in order to catch some really good concerts. So again, not too far, really fun experience and a great story to tell um, as a student traveling, maybe not in COVID, but normally. Here at OBU, uh, we have an average class size of about 20. Um, so we have about 2,000 students in our undergrad, uh, which again comes out to about an average of 20 people per classroom. You're never gonna be in a class with 300 people ever. Like it's just not gonna happen, which for me was perfect because I don't know if you guys can tell, but I love to talk um, and ask a lot of questions. So for me, that was a pretty big deciding factor on what I was looking for in college to make sure that I would be able to ask prof professors questions um, about subject material that I wasn't quite understanding or grasping. Um, and we have an average class size or average student professor ratio of about 14. Um, we intentionally don't let that number ever get above 16. 
because at the end of the four years that you're here, um, your professors are going to be the ones that write those letters of recommendation for you. So we want them to know you. We want them to know where you're from. We want them to know what you're majoring in uh, and be able to really talk about who you are as a student and what you bring to the table as a future employee. Um, so we keep that ratio pretty small. We have over 88 areas of study that you could possibly pick from. Uh, and those areas of study range everywhere from um, like our pre-med track, which we're going to call biology, biochemistry, things like that, all the way to communication studies, which is what I did, or um, education, nursing, business, uh, of course, theology and ministry as well. Um, so there's a lot of different options for you uh, here at OBU. And statistically, like someone else said, freshmen change their major. So the great thing is, is if you do change it, there's like 87 other areas of study you could potentially major in. Also at OBU, because we are a smaller um, university, we actually were ranked number two in student engagement by the Wall Street Journal. Um, so as a student, there are like over 60 organizations that you can be involved in, in our student life. And those range anywhere from chess and cheese club, where they literally eat cheese and play chess, all the way to our version of Greek life. So you have, you know, date nights, formals, free t-shirts, all the fun things. Um, and then, of course, we have intramurals. We're an NCAA Division II university, so your ID will get you into all of the sporting events on campus completely for free, uh, which is super nice. So there's a lot of ways to plug in on campus as well. Um, again, at OBU, we are Christian, obviously, so um, we are Christ-centered as an institution. So part of every person's curriculum or every student's curriculum on campus is that they're going to have to take two classes. Uh, Bible or religion courses, which are typically Old and New Testament. Um, not everyone here that comes to OBU is a believer, but everyone does have to take Old and New Testament in order to graduate. You also have to receive 96 chapels before you graduate, which averages to about 12 a semester, and we offer anywhere from 25 to 30. Um, so it's really easy to get those knocked out by a sophomore year, so easy. Um, and then also, in addition to that, we have um, global outreach. So if you're wanting to do mission trips, or if that's something that you uh, have done in high school and you want to do that as a college student, we definitely uh, offer trips all throughout the world. And then not only that, but if you wanted to study abroad, we have our study abroad program goes through our global outreach center. Um, so I had a friend who recently studied in um, Oxford for an entire semester, if that's something that you want to make part of your education or part of your college experience. And of course, financial aid, which is super important. Um, so if you apply to OBU and you get accepted, you will receive, um, every single student will receive an academic scholarship. Uh, and those range anywhere from $7,000 all the way to $14,000. they are renewable every single year as long as you maintain a 2.0 GPA, which is about a C average, so very doable. Um, and then once you hit a certain threshold, you can, you can qualify to apply for a full tuition scholarship, which is a little bit more competitive. Uh, but you have to have a 32 on the ACT and a 3.75 GPA or the equivalent on the ACT. Uh, and then you'll have to submit an essay and um, come and interview on campus. Now, again, those scholarships are a little bit more competitive, but you're guaranteed if you get accepted an academic scholarship for sure. Um, and then obviously, like if you fill out FAFSA, we do accept um, a portion of Oklahoma's Promise. And um, then there are grants and things like that that we give away based on FAFSA information. So highly encourage you guys to fill that out and um, include OBU's code on there. Um, and then most important, if you're coming to college, you want to make sure that you're going to be successful after you graduate. So 99% of our students six months post graduation are getting full time jobs into grad school or med school, which is super incredible. And that statistic speaks for itself. Um, if you're going to go to OBU and get a degree or if you're going to go to college and get a degree, you want to make sure that you're going to be employable after. Um, and last but not least, uh, we would love for you to apply today. Uh, our application today is free. There's no essay. You can go to that website. And like I said, it'll take you about 10 minutes uh, to apply. And if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to admissions at okbu.edu. Thanks so much. Appreciate that. Uh, we've got one more institution. Obviously, uh, feel free to continue to ask questions through the chat room or the question and answer section. And I will turn it over now to Tulsa Community College. Thank you, Jeff. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kelsey Embry. I am the Assistant Director for Admission at Tulsa Community College. On this call is also Rachel Wood. She is one of our admission counselors, and she's monitoring that Q&A for us. Hey, Rachel. Um, so if you have any questions while we are going over this content, please feel free to send that to her. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Oops. 
Okay. Um, so again, we're really excited to be able to connect with you virtually. And I just want to immediately jump in and flip the script on what um, we kind of have in society is these negative stereotypes of community colleges and show you what it really is like at TCC. Um, so the first thing to kind of debunk is that community college is an extension of high school. And this just isn't true. Um, our students are participating in undergraduate research. They are a part of study abroad programs. They're involved in student life. So there's a lot going on. We are the third largest school in the state. Um, so we have about 20,000 students. And with that many people, you're gonna meet new friends and you're gonna have completely different experience than you have had previously. Uh, the second thing to debunk is that we don't have student life, uh, that there's not a lot to do. Our students are coming to campus, taking class, and then just going straight home. Well, like I said, we're a large institution and there's always a lot going on. We have over 60 different student organizations to choose from to be involved in, and those range from focused on majors, so Students for Business Association, to um, organizations that are about um, based on race, ethnicity, religion, orientation, or just basic interest. Uh, we have a rock climbing group. We have uh, the TCC gamers. So there's a lot of ways to find people who have similar interests um, to your own. And I was looking, I'm trying to make sure I stay on my time. Six minutes is a little tricky. Um, and then the third thing is that, um, is what I hear the most, that I'm gonna come to TCC and take my basics, or I'm gonna take my gen eds and then um, transfer. And you are gonna take those general education classes, but you are going to select a major and be able to start taking classes that are specific to those interests. So um, maybe you're a digital media major and you're gonna start learning about web design, about Adobe, about Photoshop, um, and learning how to work these programs. So you are taking those general education classes, but you are starting to further explore um, what your career can be um, and really start jumping into your learning experience in college. And so that brings me to, what are students doing at TCC? What are the types of degrees that we offer? So at a community college, you're gonna have students who are on one of two paths. So the first path, and this is um, the majority of students, they're planning to transfer to a four-year school after completing their associate's degree with us. Uh, so if you're going to school full-time, that usually will take two years. A lot of our students go to school part-time. Uh, they have other responsibilities and are working, so it might take three. Just depends on their plan. Um, and you can see here the top institutions that our students transfer to. And we do have transfer guides. So if I want to be an engineering major at TCC, and then I would like to transfer to OSU. We have um, a guide that shows which classes you'll take here and which will transfer just to make that process as easy for you as possible um, and to make sure you're not wasting any time. The second path is our workforce path. And these are students that are, um, once they complete their program, they're eligible to start applying for jobs and working. And a lot of that for us is focused around allied health. So these students are working in our registered nurse program, um, or maybe dental hygiene, radiography, cardiovascular technology, a lot of great fields, um, a lot of great programs to be in the medical field without having to go to med school. Uh, these programs typically take three years, and like I said, then they're able to uh, start working. So it just depends, again, on what your final career goals are and what it takes to get there and be successful in that field. And we are a great place to start for that. Um, students are choosing TCC uh, because we offer so many majors and different avenues for a good career, a good income. Uh, they're choosing us because we have small class sizes. Our average class size is only 17 students. Uh, so even though we are a large institution, we're spread out around four main campuses. And so that's what enables us to have this smaller school feel and um, provide you an opportunity to interact with your professors um, and really feel like you are a part of your learning process. 
And then a big reason is because we are affordable. At TCC, we believe that quality education is affordable. And so um, when you look on our screen, you'll see that tuition and fees for the 2019-2020 year were only $142 a credit hour. And that's just the flat rate. So if you have no financial aid, no other scholarships. Um, and so then our students start looking at how am I going to afford school? And then your first step to paying for college is your FAFSA. Um, that's your first step no matter where you want to go to school. And then at TCC, we are known for our Tulsa Achieves program. This is a statement program that um, is being replicated across the country. Tulsa Achieves is the answer for how to pay to school how to pay for school for many students. It pays for tuition and fees for students um, graduating seniors in Tulsa County who are permanent resident um, or U.S. citizen. So I can't see your faces, uh, but I'm sure if that is you, you are snapping or dancing um, because Tulsa Chiefs is a great program, but we do have many other scholarships. And so um, just to kind of wrap it up, our virtual admission page has really, um, we've really put a lot of work into that since we are virtual, where you can take a virtual tour, you can go ahead and apply, and our contact information is right there um, if you need to reach out to us. I think I went over. I'm sorry, Jeff. That's quite all right. Thanks so much. <laughs> Uh, thanks to all the representatives. We've, we've got a few extra minutes here this evening, so I thought it might be interesting for, uh, what is it, each institution, if you don't mind, what is a fun, different, unique fact that maybe you didn't mention during your presentation about your institution? Share something that we wouldn't normally hear about it. Since I'm on, I can go. I just thought of, um, we have a Frisbee golf course at one of our campuses that is very fun and popular. <laughs> so not academic focused, but That's it's okay. Awesome. Very nice, very nice. Any other institution want to share something fun and unique different? Um, a random fun fact for us, Carrie <laughs> Underwood is an NSU grad. So there's that. <laughs> the Carrie Underwood the or just Carrie Underwood? Underwood. Not there. just a Carrie Underwood, yeah. That's fun. That's fun. So anybody else? And students, be sure to ask questions along the way here if you've still got them. We've still got a few minutes. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Um, I don't know how much of a fun fact this is, but um, we do offer for students to create their own clubs. Um, if we don't have something that they're interested in, that's why we have so many um, people who've created Dungeons and Dragons and Pokemon Club and all kinds of things. So you just have to get a few of your friends um, and a staff or faculty member to be your advisor. So if there's not something that you have that you want, um, you can definitely create it. So that's pretty cool, I thought, whenever I first went here, so. That is very cool. I'll need to get your address for my son who's a big Dungeon and Dragons fan. So there we go. <laughs> Anybody, there you go. Um, so two facts, uh, Shawnee is home to the very first Sonic ever. And Brad Pitt's grandma still lives in Shawnee. Brad Pitt's grandma, that's awesome. Now, is Sonic based there, or that just happens to be where they opened their first restaurant? There are probably three or four Sonics in Shawnee still, wow. but it originated in Shawnee. Very fun, very fun. So, excellent. Uh, so, at Northeastern Oklahoma a and College, a fun fact for me, being from the West Coast, was mind boggling when I see a lot of our students moving here because we have stables. So they not are only moving in themselves, but they are moving in their big horses as well. So they rent out some uh, stables here because we have our own farm. So fun fact. That is interesting. So they, they, they literally bring their own farm with or their own horses with them. Absolutely. Yeah. And sometimes you'll see them riding around campus, which is kind of cool. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, students and uh, participants, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, feel free to continue to reach out to the institutions offline. Uh, just a reminder, this has been recorded, so feel free to come back and look at it later, share it with your friends and family, um, and obviously reach out to the university and colleges directly at that point. Thanks for uh, joining us this evening. Uh, on behalf of StriveScan, you guys have a great evening. Take care. Bye-bye.